All right. Good afternoon, everyone. We are back for a golf clash uh, demonstration here. I am going to stream a little bit. Um, well, not live, but uh, we are going to do just a little bit of a stream here. Um, we're going to focus on a technique which I have not really covered, which involves the shot button. I use it sometimes. Um, you know, using the shot button for your aim can be a nice uh, virtual aim tool to kind of precisely, um, you know, hone in on your calculations a little bit better. Um, I, it's a little bit slower of a method, so you'll see a lot of the times, um, especially on camera, you will see me, um, you know, just kind of concentrate on a spot on the screen and just kind of focus on that blade of grass or whatever it is and kind of pull accordingly. And my vision, you know, is relatively solid, so I have a good handle on uh, using that technique. But I did want to cover for you guys just... Um, so I'm going to put on more of a standard bag of which I would, you know, recommend playing for tour 10 and uh, we are going to do tour 10 i did want to just kind of briefly um go over things with uh, just a little bit of um you know updated content since they've added new holes to this tour let me just start with a kingmaker i don't know if i'll go down um, but uh, one of the things that I do want to mention for this tour, we're going to play Tour 10 and Tour 11. These are the two tours that you want to kind of primarily save a lot of your katanas, a lot of your titans, a lot of your kingmaker. Um, there is very easily, um, you're going to get, uh, you know, the short end of some wins here. And uh, I am going to go at this with rock. Um, you know, Thor's hammer can also be a useful, useful driver here. Um, I do like, you know, having that backspin option. So if you don't have, you know, an Apoc 6, um, I think you should kind of favor using a Thor hammer just for that extra backspin. Here you're going to see me use the rock um, just for, you know, the aided benefit of extra curl. Um, this, with the new holes, distance does become a little bit more important. So I had previously mentioned as to, uh, you know, being able, if you've seen some of my Rock QB tutorials, about how easily you can kind of maneuver the tours with, uh, you know, those two drivers. This is the one, you know, with the new holes that they added, those Juniper Point holes, especially the par 5s. Um, it can make things a little bit more challenging for you. But you see how I have my bag set up. You know, the important things that I'm going to suggest for this tour now are Sniper and probably Goliath. Get that little bit of extra distance in case you get one of those shootouts where you need it. Um, for me, you know, I would probably use, if it was my bag, I would use um, Tsunami and uh, uh, Hammerhead as personal preference. But I'm going to appeal to the masses a little bit more here. Um, if your uh, rock is not at least a 9, uh, or at least a 7, sorry, uh, I would not suggest going um, with it. So I would recommend in kind of order, you know, rock 8. My probably second preference would maybe be quarterback 10, and then rock 7. If you don't have a developed enough um, rock that is one of those three levels, um, or one of those three clubs, Rock 7 or 8, or Quarterback 10, maybe Quarterback 9. That would probably be my last. And aside from that, you know, I would probably stick away from those drivers otherwise if you don't have them at least that developed. So here we are going to just kind of jump in toward 10 a little bit. One of the other things that I want to mention, you can see my trophy count right down around 2,500. It is the ideal trophy count mark, in my opinion. You know, all the late tours, uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You can grab games very easily with opponents. So that's why you kind of see me, you know, kind of intentionally hanging around this. You know, I'll basically kind of break even, kind of relatively, 
you know, inten intentionally. And you can see, you know, what I like to do here is I like to go for this alternate fairway over here to the um, left here. You can see I'm just kind of trying to size it up. That's with two top spin. Um, I'm going to back off just slightly, but notice how I'm keeping my momentum to the left here. Um, this fairway, this other alternate fairway does slope left to right pretty heavily. So if you don't plan accordingly, oh wow, that is long. That is very long. So you're going to see me, I did not anticipate it quite running, uh, launching out that far. And as you can see, I ran through the fairway. Not the end of the world. Um, as long as you hit that first fairway, you are good to go. Um, where I just put it, you are okay and can maneuver this hole. Uh, we will still proceed with this, you know, going at this shot pretty aggressively. Um, it is ideal to keep it in the fairway. I did not quite anticipate that it was going to run out that far with rock. You know, I was trying to visualize 10 rings up, maybe, you know, 12 to probably be on the safe side. And, you know, I just kind of lost my head for a second, wasn't really thinking about it having the possibility of actually carrying too far on the on the first bounce. But like I said, um, you know, if you get down this far, not the um, most awful place to be. Um, you know, this is kind of where two per ring is. So coming back to here might be more in the two and a half, three per ring. So maybe I'm thinking somewhere in the neighborhood of for this adjustment is about four to four and a half rings. So here you're going to see me just put the shot button right on the center. And like like I said, you know, it can be a little questionable. And here I'm gonna go right around five rings um, for my adjustment. Ah, I great balled it. I was a little slow with the timing, but I just wanted to sh briefly show you a little bit of the technique. It looked like uh, maybe my ring adjustment was pretty decent in terms of how many rings I went um, and at five rings that was probably playing two and a quarter per ring somewhere in there um, 2.5 but what you're seeing is especially straight into the face like that is you're seeing the ball just kind of um, check up much more than you see on the ball guide so what I usually try to do is try to create maybe just a little bit more run out than I usually would on the shot shape and uh, just to kind of, you know, entice that ball to um, run out um, because you have to keep in mind that, uh, you know, it's going to check up much more, especially straight into the wind, um, when you have a shot like that. So you do want to be a little uh, careful with that. Um, but nevertheless, you know, it's going to come down to basically shootouts. And, uh, you know, getting to the... You know, putting yourself in into a position to make putts and, uh, you know, just get to that shootout is going to be foremost important. Um, you know, I'm, I have no malicious intent to, you know, make out a whole a whole bunch of holdouts anyway. So it's more about getting to the shootout and hopefully we can get a couple of the new holes as well. But uh, definitely keep in mind that technique that I just used with the shot button. I am going to focus this video entirely on using the shot button for the most part. Um, with the exception of, you know, for the most part, I don't do it with driver. Now, I will do it from time to time with driver, though. So here, we are getting this hole. And one of the things that I want to briefly just state for you guys is... This hole specifically, um, I will use um, Goliath. You know, that's this is one of the holes why Goliath is in the bag. So one of the things that I do want to make a little mental note of for you guys is I usually play about 20% extra wind here. Um, now, when it's straight down wind like this, that might be a little over adjustment because when you pull down towards mid club, it's going to kind of change the way that the ball carries out. So we might make just a little bit adjustment to that 20% number. And if you have not seen a lot of my Tour 10 shootouts, feel free to check them out. I do have this hole very well covered for you guys. So even if I do not execute this one 
perfectly. I do have this covered for you guys. But notice I am going to get a little aggressive here and kind of try to land it just a little bit short of the hole and you know more online as opposed to you know I'm getting very aggressive you know pulling back an extra so let's let's play this at about you know a 13 to 14 wind and at Goliath it's basically two per so maybe seven rings here so let's try that for an adjustment and like I said you know it is probably going to um, you know definitely be enough let's see what this looks like it's checking pretty good oh I almost lost it off to the back there so you do see that it does run out a little bit extra that's one of the reasons that I jacked it up to five backspin I usually use naturally four backspin but you are seeing me just sneak that win out um, by just holding on there and uh, looks like I didn't clear out the uh, a chest to go play that tour 10 game I might have forgot to do that so let me jump on that real quick um, and uh, I did want to talk about, but you did see me use the shot button again. So you saw me use where I put it into the center and just kind of, you know, adjusted twice. That's like a two adjustment method. Um, I forgot to talk about it in the shot, but if you want to go back, I did use it. I just didn't talk about it. So I'll try to do better about that. I just kind of forgot, lost my head a little bit there. Um, but like I said, you know, I do have that hole very mapped out for you guys. Um, in terms of how many rings I went, it was, it was a pretty spot-on adjustment there. So playing that right around 14 miles per hour on the wind, which is about 20% extra, was relatively spot-on um, for the most part. Now, one of the things that I do want to mention is that you will get, uh, you know, a little bit of expansion of your ball guide. So that's one of the reasons that I jacked up the spin from... Um, you know what my natural four is on that shootout to five and here you're gonna see we're gonna more more or less have to kind of force ourselves to lay up here um, especially with rock you know I don't anticipate that being a huge problem a um, couple of things you know I do want to, to mention um, so first off here's the aim I am gonna do it for this drive um, just so you can see you know be pretty precise just try to I'm just trying to estimate six rings there um, in addition to that I'm just gonna kind of counter curl Oop, good ball I don't think a good ball is going to be the end of the world it might be starting to push that left edge but I don't think it's going to be yep it is crap uh, so not the best of all shots there but yeah that's actually a little disappointing um, I thought I was being a little bit more conservative, you know, going six rings as opposed to playing the true wind. But, uh, you know, a three ring pull is enough to just kind of overtake everything that I was doing there. Um, that's one of the reasons that I do play rock is to be a little bit more precise. You know, I can be way more precise than extra mile. And there is going to be quite a few shootouts in this tour where precision on a drive is going to, you know, give me the advantage over extra mile. So I do want to mention that, but you are going to pretty much have to almost exclusively play with kingmakers if you are going to try this approach. But let's just kind of regroup here and kind of recover from this tee shot. And let's talk about this next shot, which I am also going to um, kind of focus on the... Uh, you know, first off, I just want to say, you know, that's kind of full club. And my Spitfire 6 plays about 1.5 per ring, more or less there. So around here, we're going to assume it's going to be maybe 2, 2 and a quarter. I'm going to full backspin it just kind of to land it on the back fairway there. And we are going to, you know, 2 and a quarter, like I said. Um, it's going to be pretty much spot on four rings. So you're going to see me use the shot button and just pull over to that fourth ring. So I know I did do that a little bit on the quicker side, but I had to be roughly quick with my adjustment. And you can see I'm just kind of intentionally, you know, landed it on the long. It would have been nice to get a pitch out of it, but unfortunately I messed my drive up. Um, 
if you are going to get a pitch at it, um, you know, Falcon isn't going to be the best option. Um, I do recommend bringing um, either Thorn or Claw. Um, Hornet's just not going to be, you know, the best option, Hornet or Falcon, because for holes like this on these tight holes, it's going to be a little bit easier to come at it with full backspin. There's no real front door shot other than rough bumping it, which can be a little iffy. But I do just want to kind of just go over, um, and I am going to start talking a little bit more um, and just kind of try to set up my shot a little bit quicker and just go a little bit quicker um, so we can talk a little bit more about the shot button method. And I would do that here. This is a nice shot to slow down. And I just want to show you, you know, this is a little, you know, eighth club. Um, you wouldn't need to go more than a, a ring here um, on this adjustment. I just want to show you, you know, just so you could be kind of precise. I'm just kind of showing you where I'm going and you can see very, very gently. Um, and there's going to be, you know, a lot that you can pull that ball. You could probably, you know, great ball, it, good ball, it left or right, you'll probably still go in. But I just want to show you, you know, just kind of using the shot button and just being a little bit more precise. Um, and this is, you know, more for people that, you know, might not have, uh, you know, outstanding vision. Um, and I know a lot of my demonstration videos, I don't use the shot button. Um, like I said, it makes me a slower player. Sometimes I can't grab it and I'll accidentally, you know, pull the screen a lot more. So I just tried to avoid it altogether because of that. But let's talk about this hole. I do have this hole very well mapped on my YouTube as well. Um, so we're going to go at it when it's into the wind, more full on the top spin here. And hopefully, you know, kind of set up my shot. Um, kind of in this fashion where you can see it's kind of rolling off the back hill. In addition to this, you know, we're going to go nine rings from here, nine to ten rings, so going into power. But you notice that I need to put some curl on this, so you're going to see me use about half curl just to kind of get this going back down in the fairway. And the method that I like to use here, as you can see, it just kind of gracefully travels the fairway, and it just keeps the ball moving, gives it a nice pace. And as you can see, it just kind of shoots right at the hole when you do that. And there you can actually see I did get this hole in one. Um, it can be, you know, very annoying to actually consistently get it because there's a lot of hills and mounds and the way that it rolls, it's not always very true. But uh, you can see that as long as you prepare yourself and can set up... Um, decent uh you know and you, you're just trying to estimate you could see what i was doing with the shot arrow when i was setting up i could just kind of anticipate where 10 rings was kind of um you know going to make it run out and then i played the 10 rings right after it but uh, notice how i just tried to roll it smoothly down the fairway and get it rolling to towards the hole it's going to give you the most consistent results to where you're not going to have these weird hops where it'll slow down and you'll see you leave yourself two three yards it's going to greatly decrease the amount of time that you do that and what i usually do for my natural shot had it been you know no no wind in the face maybe i use three three to four bars of top spin is kind of you know kind of my safety uh if it's downwind i definitely cut off of that i might go one to two um, into the wind, you know, it's going to be more person four or five no matter what and there you see You know relatively successful results there for that shot um, Do not know don't remember if I used the uh, The shot button there or not I may not have um, just because it's a little bit easier to be quick um, especially on drives like that where you don't need to be you don't need to be very precise there to execute that you can see that there's a lot of room for error now to get the hole in one there's not a lot of error you have to you know get it to just run down perfect but in terms of hitting that shot 
you can pull it, you can hit it long, you can hit it short, and it'll still roughly do kind of more or less the same thing. So here for this one, we're just going to, you know, kind of visualize an entire, you know, since it's straight downwind, you know, I usually do this shot. Um, and let's, let's just do it here. You can kind of see what my intent is here. Um, and more than, more than anything, you're going to see me. Um, now, watch what I do here. I'm going to pull back five rings, and then I'm going to pull back an additional five. Kind of go at it like that. I might even short hit it just a little bit. And notice how I did it in one motion there. I went ten rings in one motion. That was the entire bullseye. And you can see, oh, I can't believe that checked up like that. That was a little bad break on the run out. It usually very consistently does that. So let's notice what I did there. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about that. So you saw I set up um, on the edge of the bullseye, which was five rings. I pulled back to the shot button, and then I pulled back an extra five. That's about the most you can pull back, which is about ten rings or so. And you see I did it in one motion, just to kind of reduce the time. In addition to that, I do want to mention that I did short hit that probably about a ring. So my total adjustment there was about 11 rings. So I do want you to be mindful of that, that any time that you're using rock, um, any club, you need to do more than the, it's a downhill shot on that hole. Um, I have quite a, I have quite a, uh, you know, extensive YouTube on um, at least some of my streams with this hole where I've covered this hole for you guys. So you guys should have a lot of content as to how to execute this one. Um, there is going to be a little bit of a gray area for this hole. It's going to become a little bit more of a challenge if you do get a strong headwind um, with the rock. But I can tell you that I can just kind of alter my shot a bit to kind of execute this one. Not to mention, if we do get a massive headwind, you know, plus you're playing your opponent too. How often is your opponent going to eagle this? And it's probably going to be roughly maybe 50-60% of the time. It's not going to approach every time you play this hole. So if you mess up this hole, there's a good chance that your opponent might as well. But I did just want to kind of point that method out for you. Um, with the shot arrow, we're going to keep doing a couple more here for you guys. I was hoping that we could get some of the new holes. I do believe that the Juniper points are still on here, but maybe they're not. Maybe they took them off. And here you see I got another Apoc card. Sorry that I just kind of go very fast through the uh, club upgrades that I get from the chess. Um, I do want you to know that uh, you know you can get those Apoc cards, stuff like that, from especially Tour 10, Tour 11. These are good, good tours to pick up cards like that. Um, doesn't mean you're going to get them, but, uh, you know, there's a good chance that you could. You know, maybe one out of every 50, 100 chests, you might get in a pot card if you're lucky. Um, if you walk open them. So thinking about that on monetary, uh, you know, if you spend a thousand gems to get one a pot, you know, it's technically not worth it. Um, I'm just trying to kind of fill up my home screen with maybe one more gold, and then I'll just stop. If I just get one more gold, I'll be satisfied with that. So there you see my opponent there was a little scaredy pants, which that's okay. Uh, no real problem. Um, we'll just find another one. And uh, play this hole. So hopefully you can get, oh, good. Now, I, they might have took out the Juniper point holes. I don't know if anybody knows. As you can see, you know, I was I started this with zero trophies, so I have not been really playing Tour 10. But with the new update, they might have took the holes out. I don't know. I don't know if any of you know. So here we're seeing quite a bit different wind from last time. So one of the things that I do want to mention, especially with a Rock 8, is... Kind of going to that left method is going to be virtually impossible now. 
So we're going to have to go at this a different way, which is fine. Um, I have no problem playing this um, a different method. So that's what we're going to do here. This is my first time in Tor um, 10 for quite some time. So my method of choice here is to go this way. Um, and I'm assuming, you know, you can see kind of what, what's happening power-wise. You're going to land more towards here. Um, you know, you got to anticipate at least five, six rings, at least six or seven, I would imagine. So, you know, visualizing seven rings, it's going to land back in here if you go full. So keep that in mind when you're setting up. And just kind of, you, you see me just kind of curling it um, to kind of account for that. Because I know that, you know, the wind's right to left. And I know that I can go a little bit more right in this fairway. Um, one of the things that I don't want to have happen is having it roll out to that left rough. So you're seeing me just kind of counter it back to the right, get it into the bulk of the fairway. <clears throat> and you can see kind of, you know, firsthand um, kind of the benefits of always putting on a kingmaker. Here you're seeing a very massive wind, which is probably in the neighborhood of 17 miles per hour for Tour 10. So being able to restrict that to, let's say it's 17, I'm probably down around 11. So being able to restrict that is going to be, you know, very um, helpful to your shootouts and to your second shots. So putting on things like this globe, especially into a headwind, not necessarily the best of ideas. But let's go through um, this approach shot here because I do want to kind of talk about this one a little bit. And you can kind of see where we're at. Um, sometimes I go over to here and play this. Sometimes I go and do this. So it all just kind of depends. And you see I'm kind of towards mid club here and I am more towards you know, mid distance as well. So um, I do want to play a little bit more cautious, which is kind of playing it like this. I'm not going to really curl it. Um, I'm going to play it safe because the wind's right, left to right, and I don't want it to push it into the bunker. So here you're going to see me play maybe, you know, four rings and just notice how I'm doing it with the shot arrow. Four, four and a quarter rings just to be on the safe side. Yep, great ball. Not going to, not going to help me but also hopefully not going to hurt me either. So you see me just more than anything, just playing it cautious, because like I said, I have that left to right wind. It can end up carrying it into that sand if I get a little bit too aggressive with my aim. So for instance, had I great balled that to the left or to the right, I might've actually hit the sand. So something that uh, you want to keep in mind. And that's one of the reasons that you see me great ball on left because I was just kind of slowing down my timing just to avoid great ball right because I knew I could bail out great ball left. So these are the sort of shot making things that you want to think about. And notice what I did with the shot button, how I used it for my correction. And notice I, I always rotate the screen to, to make the wind either straight up or straight down. And then I just drag straight back down towards the shot button or um, upwards if I spin the other way. So, and as you can see, I have full control of the shootout here. So we are going to go to shootout. That way, hopefully, we can get a little supplemental to this video. Oh, 
All right, so another old hole. I'm assuming it's starting to look like the juniper stuff could be gone. So it looks like, uh, you know, coming to this tour might not be as mandatory as I think it was. I was coming here to kind of update the tours for you. I'm not sure these are part of tour 10 anymore. I haven't seen one juniper hole. And I swear, tournament week, um, I didn't, although I didn't come in tour 10, I saw some videos guys made of tour 10, like shootouts and stuff, where they either got a hold in one or something and they wanted to show it off. I saw plenty of these videos happen, so it's interesting to see them not in this tour right now. Um, one of the things that I do want to mention in this, um, if you haven't seen me play this hole on um, YouTube, I do have it very well covered. So um, I do want to just briefly mention that uh, I do like to play about 20% extra with the wind here. Um, I also um, play max club, so no real dis, uh, problem with, um, you know, playing mid, min club or any of that you don't have to really worry about. Aside from that, you know, 20% extra, I'm going to play about a 10 wind, which is going to be about five rings. So here you're going to see me aim right around here. You see my backspin is right around three and a half. And we are going to play right around five rings here for that extra wind. Get it play more like 10 miles per hour, for example. Maybe just a hair more than five. And just kind of go for it. Um, it is an overplay, like I'm mentioning. And it has to do with a little bit of shot correction. You can see that I still end up to the left of the hole. And... Uh, you know, doing an overcorrection method, just make sure that you can actually land it in that landing zone. And you can see that, you know, whether I overcorrect for the wind and just do kind of an overcorrection, because it's so right to left, you know those hops are going to change and it's going to go much more to the left than the ball trail is showing from where you land. So doing an overcorrection method, the way that I do it on that hole, um, is perfectly fine as long as you don't get too aggressive to where you're going over the bunker stuff like that So as long as you can safely do it um, I do recommend doing it that way and maybe you know Honing in on not using as much curl because when you introduce curl into the shot then you get the potential to short hit it to long hit it and accidentally do kind of some of the wrong things so just to practice good behavior i do recommend you know and i've kind of covered a lot of overcorrection methods on a lot of the shootout holes for tour 10. Um, i don't really do anything with a lot of um, you know counter curl or anything like that just to kind of hone in on precision a little bit and if you haven't seen my tour 10 shootouts um, feel free to check those out as, like I said, I have virtually everything covered for you guys in Tour 10. A lot of almost every wind of the old holes. I do not have the juniper holes, and that's about it. The reason of this stream was to hopefully get a couple of the juniper holes, and I'm unsuccessful in getting them right now. So that's a little bit disappointing, um, but they might not be here anymore. So that could be good news for you guys too, especially if you were struggling with them. Um, because the one thing that I do want to mention, and it's kind of, it's kind of a, an ironic thing to me. Juniper Point was, you know, one of the easiest courses in the game. And then they go ahead and they add four holes or five holes, whatever it is. And they're almost in the, amongst the hardest in the game. So you have uh, half of the course now, which is the easiest in the game. And the other half, which is almost the hardest in the game. So it kind of makes kind of no sense. The course, if you were to play it straight out, it's just kind of like you get these easy holes, but then you get these ridiculously hard holes. Um, well, you know what? We did get one of the juniper holes, though, so they must still be here. I remember getting the par four that I drove it in the bunker. That means they still must be here. So here you can see when we get straight in the wind, this is going to get a little bit harder. One of the things that I do want to mention is I do believe we can get on this island. 
Um, hmm. Now we are very much into power here. Um, and I can't believe I'm about to do this. But as well, um, I'm going to try to do the top spin shot off the rough here with just a full power um, curl to the right here. And hopefully it hits it. <laughs> and it didn't. So you're going to see me go right into the drink here. <laughs> so I was trying to size it up on whether or not it was going to hit the rough. I knew it was going to be kind of close. It wasn't quite as close as I was hoping. It was probably almost two rings long. Um, one of the misconceptions that I do want to just kind of point out is anytime you're going into full power like that, especially into max power on the club, you can see it was like said like plus 12 stuff like that, that anytime you do that, um, instead of playing one per ring, it's going to play more like maybe 0 0.8, 5, 0 0.9 per ring. Um, so I do want to just kind of point out that you need to do a little bit more of an over adjustment um, in those scenarios. And here you're seeing my opponent have just a little bit of trouble here with another headwind. Um, so I can kind of choose what to do here. Now this time I know that I can go this way quite easily as well. It's not going to be challenging to do this at all now. So we can kind of set up to do this purposely. And uh, you can see what I'm doing with my spin, virtually cranking it back. And aside from that, you're gonna see me essentially curl it entirely um, because there's no real risk of getting it too right here. All I need to do is hit the fairway, bounce it up, and get it into the middle somewhere. So somewhere between four and five backspin. You're going to be perfectly fine being able to do that. And with my opponent hitting the uh, rough here, um, I'm assuming, you know, we'll probably still wind up in the playoff. Um, just wanted to kind of show you that, uh, that drive because, you know, there's not very many scenarios where I can cover everything for that drive for you. Um, and the very first one that we played was more of a questionable. I don't recommend going for the wit going for the island on those questionable ones. I, but if you know you're going to make it, like I did on the second one, that's the point that I say go for the island. Other than that, I'd say go stick with the rough or the right, the left. Sorry. So here, one of the things that I do want to mention is I am into power here. So see the plus eight over there. So instead of going the usual, maybe 9.4 rings, you're going to need to do a bit of an overplay. Now, I am going to do this in two motions. So here you're going to see me pull because I do want to go beyond 10. So there you're going to see me pull to 5. And here you're going to see me maybe pull to, and let me just set up here, and I'm going to you know, pull more towards the shot button. That's 10. And I'm going to go another almost two rings beyond that as well. So all in all, almost 12 12 rings for that adjustment. Let's just see what this looks like. As you can see, it's still an under play. Um, not by a ton, because it is going to take the hill down, but uh, still needed to go an additional three rings, probably. Um, so, again, like I mentioned, anytime you're in power like that, you have to find a way to figure out how much of an overplay you need. Um, because you can see the way that I adjusted, it was very spot on. It was 11 and say 0.7 rings, give or take. By the method that I used, um, I pulled one entire bullseye, which is five rings, which is like half of a bullseye. And then I positioned myself to pull another. And then beyond that, you saw it go roughly maybe two, almost two rings beyond that. Um, on that second pull. So if you want to watch my two pulls and uh, rewind that so you can kind of grasp what I'm doing because I did it in two motions, even though you might, you know, you could slow it down and do it in three motions, but that's just going to slow you down even farther. You know, you can pull it to five, pull it to five, and then you can, you know, pull it to two in a separate pull. Uh, yes. So that's one of the biggest reasons that I was, uh, you know, just kind of unlocking a few. Because I did want 
was hoping to get a platinum chest coming up. And there you see me getting it there. So here we are, I'm getting to the next hole. And unfortunately, you know, one of the things that I do like to sometimes do is go to the last fairway. So if we're playing rock as our driver, that shot is now going to be kind of out of question. And we're going to have to play it a little bit more safely. So that's what you're going to see me kind of set up to do here. It's kind of more of like this shot, maybe two backspin, some side spin, kind of like this, spin it away from the trouble. It's kind of what I'm doing here with my setup. Um, let me just crank it up just a little bit more, two and a half. And then in addition to this, you know, you're going to see me play the rings, about 11, 12 rings there. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, come on. you got to be kidding me. Can't believe it flew like that. So that was a little bit more of a challenging wind, but I made it definitely a little bit harder than I needed to. I could have taken off some of that power and played the shot a little bit different. I did not expect it to fly out that far. Um, thought it was still going to land a little bit shorter, kind of a little bit past where you see that guy's shot arrow. So might put me in a little bit of trouble on this one. Now, I do know that, uh, you know, at least probably 20, 30% of the time, you know, your opponent is going to make birdie here. So it's not the end of the world if you make a little mental mistake on this hole. Um, when they hit the, uh, here's the one thing that I do dislike is when they hit the trees, if you intentionally go for those trees, you almost wind up in the fairway every time. I find it to be kind of like a cop out and it's kind of an, one of those annoying things about this hole is being able to do that shot and get away with it but it's a part of the game so um, just keep that in mind um, that is you know very uh, possible to see your opponent do that and here you see me just kind of beating it up here kind of putting it into position um, I really needed perfect ball there to give myself a nice view um, and I didn't so we could be kind of up against it here because I'm assuming, you know, this guy is going to get a shot between the trees now. Um, and, you know, he might be up there, get his eagle, and we might have to move on because I don't have a clear view at the hole. So a little disappointed in that, but it's just kind of the way it is. Like I said, you know, you can kind of intentionally run it into those trees and it's kind of like a cop out. It's kind of, you know, I really don't like that you can do that. I, I'd rather you, you know, need to play the shot. And I'd rather see when you hit those trees, the ball fall straight down. It's kind of a penalty for going that way. But as you can see, you know, it's perfectly fine to actually intentionally just aim for it and just ricochet it off it and then play this shot into the green. You can do it like that every time if you want. So... Let's see what we're looking at here. Um, I will set up to kind of do this, but uh, you know, very, very low probability stuff right here that this is gonna happen. So one of the things that I want to do is I just kind of want to split the difference and kind of land it right around here. And I'll just do a little bit curl on top of this. Um, in addition to where I am, I was a little bit towards, was it, it was max, right? Towards max. I didn't really size it up too well. Um, I wasn't giving this much, you know, chance to go in, but I'm going to go about seven rings. So notice I'm going to do it in one, which is that seven rings like that. Um, like I said, you know, I am going to just kind of gently curl it around the tree. I just got it off in time. Let's see how this runs out. Just left it a little bit short. So I'll you know, there was no real way of knowing whether or not that was going to, you know, kind of run out. It was just kind of an estimation more than anything. And I kind of blew it, choked it away on this hole with an errant tee shot. Disappointing, but, uh, 
you know, it happens. You just come back next time, you realize what you did. Um, I know what I kind of did. I really didn't need to power it as much as I did. Um, and then it would have landed a little bit shorter, um, not in trouble. And all would have been good had I done that. So, like I said, you know, you just kind of learn from your mistake, especially when you're out of playing the tour. You know, I haven't played the tour in a while. So hitting every shot perfectly can be, you know, a bit of a challenge. And, uh, you know, as long as you remember what you did last time you did it. And, you know, plus if, after you get some, you know, a couple, three, four playthroughs on, you start to get in kind of a groove to where you, you know, feel comfortable around the hole. This goes monumentally for the shootouts. It's even more important in the shootouts because the littlest mistakes, if you don't remember kind of the methods on the shootouts, you're going to be significantly farther than you usually are. And it just kind of takes repetition to kind of get that feel back. Um, and I know, you know, that's something that even I struggle with. So I want you guys to know that if you're kind of jumping around on tours a lot, you know, I haven't played Tour 10 for ever since I put those videos out. So however long that was, was that three months ago or something? I don't, I don't know when I put those shootouts, but that's the last time I played Tour 10. So to jump back into it um, can be a bit of a challenge. Here, you're going to see me tone it down just one ball. Don't necessarily need the most power here. And wind resistance, you can see that uh, you know I'm just trying to visualize seven rings back I am going to probably be able to go full ball at this so I'm going to do that perfect ball and notice how anytime that I'm kind of playing this hole I just kind of shoot it back to the left down towards the center of the fairway I don't try to get too flirty with the right side or the left side I just try to focus on putting it into the center and had I done that same shot with a Kingmaker, you know, I would have had to take off some power. So these are things that you just need to kind of be observant upon um, when you're playing your game. Is just kind of understanding, um, you know, how far the ball is going to carry. You know, I have seven or eight rings of safety there on a seven wind. So you're just trying to visualize, you know, eight rings back is kind of your safety zone. And that's kind of the way that I was setting that one up. So here we are going to try to get to the playoff here. So let's see what happens with this guy. If he gets a little bit hot, um, you know, I'm not going super cutthroat here to try to hold this one out, but I am going to at least try to give you guys, you know, the technique as well. But with a wind that strong, you know, this is going to be a hard holdout anyway. But notice how I'm putting it on the green. Notice there's where Max Club is. We're going to be pulling up towards that. So you want to make sure that you're kind of playing enough rings accordingly. So here you can see um, I'm keeping it just to the left of the hole um, and I'm going to do a little bit more of an overplay. So ten and a half rings would usually be seven um, at max club and you're going to see me go at least seven here. So I'm going to try to do this in one swoop. So there's, oh, I can't. So there was like six something. And there's seven something now. Let's see what this looks like. A little bit of an underplay. And like I mentioned, you know, you needed to go at least seven because seven at max, you know, you have a side win like that. It's going to push a little bit farther with the second and third bounces. So you can't just play it at max. You need to go a little bit beyond max. So that's what I was doing there. You know, seven straight up would have been right. And I probably went seven and a half. And it was still just a tad bit of an underplay. So keep that in mind with your pitch game. And I think you will greatly improve it. Um, and be able to make more of those front door pitch shots. Um, I do try to rely on front door for virtually all of my shots that I can because I find it to be the most reliable method in the game. Um, you don't get any of that real cut spin. You keep it down to a minimal, whereas you'll get a lot more cut spin trying to go back door. So the only time I do go back door is when I'm forced to. So you still have to know that shot, have it in your repertoire. But like I was just mentioning, um, 
you know, it's just one of those good things to, you know, keep in mind to kind of improve your chip game would be to, in my opinion, you know, kind of stick to the front door. Um, it's a little bit easier to make and anticipate the way you don't get any of that cut spin or side spin, none of that. And trying to predict that can be a bit of a challenge. It takes, takes like a thousand shots to get that technique down. It is very, very challenging. So, like I said, you know, the front door is just a little bit more straightforward approach. Definitely going to, uh, you know, be relatively consistent. So, here we have this hole. Um, what I usually do if I go for the fairway shot is um, do it with driver off the fairway here. Since you can see, you know, I'm not into max or anything, you might see me just kind of play it over here off the right edge here. So let me just kind of side spin this just to kind of get this going down the hill a bit. And you're gonna see me kind of play it more like this. A little bit short and maybe towards uh, min club a little bit more. So there I'm gonna to push towards five and I'll probably push seven. Let's just try that. Let's try seven rings. You know, you're just kind of using the slope, just kind of naturally, gracefully bringing it into the hole. And you're not going to be able to do that with every wind. With another wind pointed the other direction, you might need to go to the left side of the rough and do the similar thing. But what's nice, especially about having rock and QB, uh, you can see the ball guy. This is like a driver sniper, okay, guys? This is why these are cru crucial clubs. Whoever says extra mile is the all to end. They, you know, I just kind of laugh at them because I play against them and you see me just hit these shots and, you know, it's just kind of, you know, a breeze to beat guys that are playing extra mile, especially, you know, you know, if they don't hit that perfect ball, they hit that great ball. Um, you know, I can hit a great ball and mine is still going to be right by the hole. Uh, extra mile, you know, it's going to be at least you know, 2.2 yards off to the right or the left um, with a great ball. So let's go ahead and do one more hole for you guys. As I have one more free pin chest. So this is roughly about an hour. And now we are starting to get the juniper holes. Look at them start to come into focus. So it's unfortunate that uh, we played so many holes to get to them. Um, the one thing that I do want to mention about this is, um, you know, you are putting yourself a tiny bit at a disadvantage here, um, not having the distance, but not the end of the world either. So I am going to show you, um, know that, uh, you know, this ball is going to shoot downhill, uh, considerably. So for instance, if I get a nine wind, I'm going to need to visualize at least 11 or 12 because the ball's gonna have that extra carry, minimum. So I'm gonna to try to visualize, you know, 12 rings up and kind of play the shot accordingly if that's my wind. So keep that in mind when you guys are doing this. Um, and there you see, you know, one little errant tee shot can virtually take you out of this hole. And it's so easy to do with extra mile or apocalypse, whereas it's going to be kind of challenging to do with for instance, rock or QB. Um, and like I said, you know, I'm just trying to visualize um, at least 10, 11 rings down. So that's going to be kind of my target line. And, uh, you know, I might just curl it a bit too, getting it back to the right, not necessarily the worst thing in the world. So that's what you're going to see me kind of do here. And perfect ball. And there you see, you know, it's very aggressive on the fairway edge. I almost had to take something off. And being as that's the first time that I've ever had to do that, you know, you just kind of put that in your memory bank. It played that much down. You know, that was at least 13 or 14 ranks. So it might even be a little bit more than I was mentioning. But as you can see, you know, enough for me to um, put this one in play. One of the things that I do want to give you guys for a tip of advice on this hole is to either use a katana 
or a kingmaker every time you play it. So being able to do kind of a side spin, second shot, is going to be the crucial most thing that you can do to keep yourself in this hole. So to give you a really nice chance to make it, you're going to want to keep it away from that bunker and the rough. And the best way to do that, here you see there's Max Club. We are going to be right at Min Sniper. So here you're going to see me just kind of crank that up accordingly and just try to, I mean, you can see what I'm doing is I'm just trying to keep it away as much as possible. Keep it a little bit short. Um, I am going to need to pull back at least seven rings here. Notice what I'm doing with my speed wise. And like I said, you know, I don't want to get too aggressive. Um, like I said, you know, I'm going to pull back seven rings. There's seven right there. You can see the edge of the orange right there. And I'm going to do it with some curl in addition. As opposed to getting too aggressive and bringing that bunker and all that stuff into play. So it's a lot safer to play just a little bit of curl. In case I do great ball to the right, I don't put it in the bunker. I don't put it in the rough. So keep those techniques in mind. Um, I want to see you guys give yourself the best possible chance to get to the shootout here and without making mental mistakes. So it's okay to make a few, as you can see, you know, I think I, even I, you know, I've made at least two bad shots in this stream. Um, you know, two, three bad shots myself, so at least, so. But the best is just to kind of always keep them on your mind. Think about what you did wrong and make sure you don't do it twice. Don't make the same mistake twice. It's kind of the best advice. And use your uh, shot button, if, especially if you, you know, cannot be precise with how you're pulling. Uh, it can be a very good visual tool for you to pull. And I just wanted to kind of show you this method to just kind of, uh, you know, kind of hone it. Ah, stop. Okay. Whew. So I was trying to, ah, oh, I quit. <laughs> That's so stupid. Dude, we were going to shoot out. But, okay. That's fine. You want to do that? That's fine. So, unfortunately, no shootout there. But, uh... Uh, good luck, guys, with your Tour 10 play. I um, wish you guys all the luck. Uh, I will do my best to kind of update some of those shootout holes for you guys. Definitely keep my techniques in mind when you are doing some of those shootouts. And I noticed we only got one of the new holes, but that is probably the hardest one. Um, keep that in mind, you know, that big hill. You know, you probably are going to want to play more kind of spot up. Whatever the adjustment is, if you're at mid-club, play it more of a mid-club adjustment. Uh, you saw me with the rock there on that. I went probably seven rings for an eight-something wind. So, you know, that just kind of shows you I'm going more of a mid-club adjustment as opposed to playing it one per ring. Um, um, and with very good results. Keep in mind that I was also pulling back towards the short end of the club there. Had I been pulling towards max, I would have actually played it at max. So keep those things in, in mind. Also, keep in mind, do not take it off the cliff. If you're ever going to have a high enough wind where you're going to have to pull off the cliff or into a very high elevation, if you're on to the very left, um, don't do it. You need to revert from the shot, and you probably need to play the fairway bump, which is going to be more of a straight up, no spin, maybe one back spin. Um, and it should be you know, relatively simple to do either. When you're downwind like I was, uh, it's ideal to play that rough bump um, because you're going to be pulling, you're going to be right at min. It's, it's a lot easier, say you had a marlin on, to go to the min club with, uh, you know, a no power ball as opposed to had I tried to play the fairway shot with a katana would be very challenging. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, you might have to cross fairways, for example. You know, if I, have a, if I have a right to left win like that, I might need to play the left rough on the edge and just right spin it back full. Because that might be the only way to not put it off the cliff if the wind's super high. 
So keep those techniques in mind um, because like I said, you know, I don't have that whole very mapped and you can see it took me an hour or something of play just to see that whole one time. So to update that hole for you guys, it's going to take quite a bit of time because there's no way I can guarantee it. So I'll do the best to kind of get that content for you guys, but just kind of keep my tips in mind for the short term. And hopefully you guys found this tutorial successful and it will start to increase your, especially your precision for wind, ring play. So good luck with that technique and uh, see you guys on the next video.